A couple months ago, we did a video, and I'll post it right here. It was an experiment trying out Kodachrome 64 in this year, 2021, and it was a pretty epic failure. We are going to try this experiment again. We're going to take this roll of Kodachrome 64, load it in the Olympus OM-1 camera, take it out in the field for some photographs, and then develop it again as a black and white film and see if we can overcome the errors and mistakes that we made last time we tried this. I'm James Fisher, and this is Vintage Illumination Photography. In fact, there's not much more vintage than a roll of film that expired in 1985. <laughs> Attempting to use Kodachrome film in 2021, a film that's been discontinued for decades, is going to prove to be a particularly interesting challenge. We've tried this once before, and it was a pretty epic failure, so we're going to do everything we can this time around to guarantee our success. We're going to need a few things. What's the first thing we're going to need? We're going to need a 35 millimeter camera, and I'm going to use, just like we did in the other video, we're going to use the Olympus OM-1 which is a wonderful, wonderful 35 millimeter camera. I have with me, we'll see if we use it at all, but I do have an original Olympus OM model, 75 to 150 F4 zoom lens. We may attempt a few photographs in this. What do you think about the drawbridge back there? That's pretty cool, huh? The other thing we're gonna need is gonna be a roll of Kodak Kodachrome film. And as I've said before, this one expired in October, October of 1985. I don't know if you can read it right there on that, but this guy expired October 1985. So we're going to be up against some challenges. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to load this film into the Olympus OM-1. Let's get to it. First thing we do is we pull up the back to open it up, and there's our opened camera. Let's get our... Kodachrome 64 film. We'll open up this expired guy. Kodachrome 64, daylight balance, 35 millimeter. Drop him in, lock this down. This pulls out and through a little bit. And then we need to fire the camera. It inserts into these slots that are right here. And that's what holds it. And then we need to make sure that the sprockets are engaged in the guide reels as it goes, just like that. And this is a counter wind, so it winds the film the opposite way of what it was in the canister. So let's close up the back, make sure it's fully there. Three shots, one, two, three. Make sure that this turned on the last one, and we should be good to go. And now that that film is fully wound and into the Olympus OM-1, we're almost ready to go take some photographs, but because this film is so out of date, I know that we need to overexpose it a little bit to make sure that we have proper exposure on this. Generally, they talk about one f-stop or one shutter speed or doubling or having, I guess would be the ISO for each decade the film is out of existence. So 95, 2005, 2015, and it's 2021. So that's roughly three f-stops. I'll be sure to develop this a little longer, plus a little more agitation during development to increase that contrast. So I'm going to be shooting this Kodachrome 64 at ISO 16. What is something else that we need to guarantee success on this? And it's something you would never think of. That one other specialty item that we need, it's right behind me right here. What we need for success is a fun bicycle.
We've ridden to the Blue Water River Walk. This is the St. Clair River. Up behind us a little bit is Lake Huron, and that's where the Blue Water Bridge that connect Port Huron with Sarnia, or the USA with Canada. As we turn and look, you can probably see why this is called the Blue Water Area. It's pretty spectacular. But these, this is the area we're gonna try to do our black and white photographs with that Kodachrome 64. I'm doing as much as I can, trying to stay in bright sunlight to increase our chances of this working out. So we are gonna keep going. I can see some pilings and different things right up here. In fact, let me turn around. You can see them back over my shoulder, right over here. And we've used those before in some photographs. And uh, those will be some subjects again. Let's hit the road, let's get going. Well, I don't know if it shows up in the video, but how blue this water is. Um, and it varies. Some days it's a deep royal blue. Today it's just a beautiful turquoise blue. I'm just amazed always at the beauty of this area and the water. I hope it shows up in the video how, how absolutely beautiful this blue is here. Um, it's a shame that we're using one of the best color films ever made, in my opinion, the Kodachrome 64, and we're shooting it as black and white. Actually, we're developing it as black and white. We always shoot in color, right? Because the world is color. But um, I don't know. I'm getting, uh, getting kind of anxious to throw this roll of film in the soup to see what, what we come up with. Let's get a few more shots, though. We'll get a couple more shots. I think we've only got about 10 left on the roll, and then, and we'll develop, we'll see how we did, see if we succeeded or not. I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm trying this again. This is so insane, so absolutely insane. Let's get a couple close-ups here, All right, like this. Almost done. Can you believe our luck? Look at this. The Algoma Discovery Freighter right there. This really needs a wide angle lens though, because this this guy ain't really cutting it. Your boat coming. Let's see if we can get the two of them. And there's a third one on its way too. Title that, coming and going. We've got we got just a couple more frames left on this roll, this 36 exposure roll. I say we do one or two more and we call it good. these stairs we're gonna get the last couple shots right over here Come down there's a there's rocks they put here um, kind of a natural fishing spot um, it's a lot of it's a lot of walleye and uh, other fish here that uh, that are really popular with the fishermen but let's uh, let's get ourselves set up and uh, we're gonna get a couple shots there's a couple logs or stumps sticking out of the ground right here. 
Well, that's the last frame. This is gonna finish us up for the shooting portion of the Kodachrome 64. Let's go back home, get the developer out, get the film into the canister, develop it, and we'll see what we get. I don't know, it, the, the fail was so bad last time, and I had no idea how out of date that film was. This time I know, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because that's some seriously out of date film. I've taken the Kodachrome 64 out of the Olympus OM-1. I have the canister, I have to break that open, load the film onto a reel, and get it all set for processing. Doing that here in the closet, this uh, old closet in our house is actually the darkest place in the house. Um, just like before on the other video, I'm um, using a jacket and a black jacket and I put all the materials that I need inside this jacket so I can crack open that film canister, cut the leader end off, and then uh, shuttle it on to the reel, because it's a plastic reel, we shuttle that on, and then it put it in the light tight container and it'll be all set and ready for development. See you in a minute. Here we are, Mark. The film is in the canister, ready for development. Laundry room is right next door, convenient. The film is in here, we're gonna do a water wash first to uh, wash off some of that black Remjet packing. So let's get that, <clears throat> let's get that going. This one's coming off really clean. Memory serves me right. Last time we developed this film, we used D76 and 11 minutes. We're going to be using our D76 developer again, but I'm going to go a little bit longer. I'm going to go to 13 minutes this time with a little more agitation just to make sure. Um, I don't know, maybe we're going to end up with negatives that are so blocked up that um, they won't, um, won't be good enough at all, but, uh, but we'll see. So we're going to start pouring this in and then we're going to set our timer. Got my growler of developer. Hey Siri, set a timer for 13 minutes. 13 minutes, counting down. 11 minutes to go. 8 minutes to go. 6 minutes 30 seconds, that's the halfway point. 3 minutes to go. Two minute warning. <laughs> My heart is beating fast. You wouldn't think just developing a roll of film would do that, but I'm, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna work. Less than a minute to go. Why do we even do crazy stunts like this? I have no idea. Let's do a really quick rinse on this before we put the fixer on it. Hey Siri, set a timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes, starting now. There's a thought. You can pause the video right now and go leave a comment. What do you think? Do you think we have images on this roll or not? Because I don't know. 1985, what was I thinking? 1985, number one song, Careless Whisper by Wham. Number two, Like a Virgin, Madonna. Number three, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, Wham. Number four, I Wanna Know What Love Is, Foreigner. Number five, I Feel For You, Shaka Khan. Number six, Out of Touch by Hall & Oates. Number seven, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, Tears for Fears. What a great song. Number eight, Money for Nothing, Dire Straits, one of my favorites. Number nine, Crazy for You, Madonna. And number 10, probably one of the best music videos ever made, Take On Me by AHA. Now there's a thought, maybe we can be in a cartoon world. I got a real adrenaline pump going on here. I am really worked up about this. If this doesn't work, if I have a blank roll or a black roll, does that mean I don't have a vlog this week? 
That's something to think about. Three minutes left in the fixer. Two minute warning on the fixer. We're under one minute. Here we go. All done. There, we've got it open. Canister comes off. There's our film on the reel and the fixer. Let's it up and look. I don't know, I can't tell. I can't tell what we have. Look at that, we definitely have images. We can see the exposures and we have plenty of exposure this time around. And there it is, our second time trying Kodachrome film in 2021. This roll expired in 1985. 1985. I had a lot more hair then, and I was doing this. This is my old studio from 1985. The first time we tried this, the film was massively underexposed, and that was due to my own error in how I set the camera. But this roll, I overexposed by three f-stops, so worried that the age of the film would make it less light sensitive, that it would be stale. And I don't really think that was the case. Those negatives were really dense. They were just as dense as the first set of negatives were thin. Maybe, just maybe, we'll try this again someday. And I wanna thank you for joining me in this crazy experiment of using Kodachrome film in 2021, an era that there is no processing at all for Kodachrome film. We're very fortunate that Kodachrome film is truly a black and white film and the dyes were added, those color dyes were added in the processing so we can process it in black and white chemistry and get a workable negative. One of the cats was getting into some stuff here in the studio. I think it's supper time, he wants to be fed. I had a great time putting this together, and hopefully you did too, from planning the bicycle ride to doing the development, and that was real. I, I was really nervous about that. I had no idea what would come out, and actually seeing the photographs. What a joy, what a joy using film from what I really consider my era, the 1980s, um, when I used to do work professionally and film was all we had. One thing that this experiment does do, it really makes me appreciate the digital technology we have. I forget how much using film we're working in the blind. This could have been fogged by radiation. It could have been kept in somebody's attic. We don't know how this film was stored, but obviously it was good enough that we were able to get some images. Hey, I'm James Fisher. Thanks for coming along on this journey. We'll see you next time.